today we're going to look at the removal of this wind turbine but before I take it down I wanted to show a close-up of the uh, pole design that I've been using here this was originally put up for a TV antenna years ago and it's a two inch diameter pipe outside diameter and it goes up there and there's a piece of thick angle iron that runs along one of the roof rafters there and it's connected from the bottom with four inch lag bolts into the roof rafter as well there's four inch lag bolts up on the top side that come down Now today is a nice calm day to remove this. It's not too wet out here. It's been mucky the last few days. It's not windy today. A couple days ago this thing was flying around. It was doing pretty good. You know, but I want to get it down and get her up for sale. You know, it's not going to do me any good here. There's not enough windy days. And I'm tucked in around the trees. I basically put it up to test it. Make sure it was working okay. And... I have tested it, it's good. Under no load, I had enough wind that it got up to 50 volts DC with no load on it, just measuring it right off the rectifier. Of course, you get less than that when you hook it up to the battery bank and run it through the battery. That regulates the speed of the wind turbine and how much voltage it's gonna produce. Down here, what we have is again, it looks like it's probably quarter inch thick angle iron it's not the thin stuff that you're, is going to twist now that's sticking up above the ground about six inches and then it's in concrete from about an inch or two below the ground for about three feet in concrete there's enough room between the two so you put two flat sides basically what we do is we set the angle iron in the concrete with a two inch gap or a little larger than a two inch gap between it. And then what you can do is put the pipe in the middle, drill a hole right through and put a bolt. Now you put one near the bottom and then put another hole higher up to lock it in when it's in the up position to help give it extra support. It's a very simple, very stable when it's attached to the side of a house or a garage or a strong, strong building or structure. Again, you go up, you have the angle iron and a U-bolt that holds it in place. So the way you want to do this first is find your rafter or some wood that you can join your angle iron to that's not going to pull out of something good and strong that's part of the building you know if you're at the end you can come right off the edge of the building if you're up under you find a rafter or something just attaching it to the soffit is not going to work it'll tear that out in no time so it's got to be into good wood you want to use three inch lag bolts about four of them so if there's a good wind it's not going to tear that angle iron right off then what you do is you put your drill your holes for your U-bolt. When your U-bolt's in there, you put your pipe up in there and stand the pipe on the ground. You put the U-bolt around the pipe and then you take a level and you level the pipe. And once the pipe is level, you mark out a, a one or two foot diameter hole. And that's where you're gonna dig your hole. Then you can take the pipe down, dig your hole, you need to mark off where center is and then when you dig the hole you want to dig the hole down about three feet and you want to cut about four and a half feet of angle iron and drive the angle iron about six inches into the soil when you drive the angle iron six inches into the soil put another one two inches over from it and make sure that the gap in the center lines up where you marked your center mark so that your pipe will stand properly plumb when you when you connect when you lift it up then you pour concrete in and let the concrete set up for a few days before you connect your pipe to it and then you just 
down the side there you drill your holes right through the pipe you start with the bottom one you drill a hole in the pipe then you drill a hole in the angle iron but leave a couple inches from the, where the ground's going to be because your wire is going to come out the bottom you don't want it to pinch it off as you can see what I've done there is use some of that plumbing foam and I've wrapped it around there and stuck it in the bottom of the pipe to protect the wires from getting pinched so basically that's all there is to it that's an economical way to put one of these up if you want it on the side of your house on the side of a barn or garage or any place where you have a, a sturdy structure that's not going to move in strong winds So I'd just like to make a correction to that. Uh, when I shot it, I was just getting over a cold, so my head wasn't thinking too clearly. Uh, with regards to the angle iron up at the roof level that comes off of the rafters, use three inch lag bolts. I said four, and I think I said three later on, but uh, you could probably use four inch if you're into two by six framing. That's two by four framing, so three inch lag bolts are proper size to be using on that I put in four from the bottom and four from the top <laughs> the second correction when it comes to doing the hole for the angle iron for the mount the pipe what you do is dig you dig a three foot deep hole you cut four and a half feet of angle iron and you hammer the angle iron one foot into the ground not six inches into the ground so originally I said six inches that was wrong you hammer the angle iron in about one foot deep so that should leave you about six inches above the ground when you pour three feet of concrete actually pour a little less than three feet of concrete so that it's about two inches below ground level that way you can cover it up with some dirt and that's all there is to it